Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. So, hello everybody. My name is Ella Frake, and I'm here to present to you my AP research project, an analysis of equine commercial feeding companies and the represented feeds for horses with equine metabolic syndrome in comparison to the healthy adult horse. So the specific question I plan to answer is, Considering the ideal percentages of components created for the equine feeding industry, how significant is the difference in percentages when analyzing the NSC component in an EMS low starch diet in comparison to a healthy adult diet? Now, you might be wondering what is equine metabolic syndrome or EMS and what is NSC, but I will delve deeper into that in a little bit. Firstly, I would like to tell you how I got to this point and picked this research topic in question. Roughly four years ago, my mare experienced level four ulceration in her stomach, which if you don't know, she had a pretty bad case. Um, ulceration is sores or ridges along the stomach lining when acid levels are disrupted. What I mean by this, is that a horse's stomach is only lined on the bottom half. Great and all, but when a horse is being worked, the acid that sits on the bottom is now being sloshed up and irritating the stomach. Um, now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this topic, but the important takeaway is that she was put on a low starch diet to help prevent the ulcers from coming back after treatment. She will be put on this diet for the rest of her life. And due to altering her diet, she has been ulcer free for the past four years. Before she developed ulcers, I never understood the importance of feeding different feeds and their percentage of components. The aim of this study is to show the importance of feeding horses based on their differing metabolic concerns. Now, equine metabolic syndrome, or EMS, is an endocrine disorder affecting horses and ponies. As shown in the picture above, this is a horse with EMS. As you can see, this would be considered a pretty extreme case. But there are fat deposits along the shoulder, the back, and the hindquarter region. Now, to fully understand this syndrome, I'm going to talk about it on more of a cellular level. Horses have adipose tissue through their body. In the adipose tissue are what we call adipocytes. Now, when weight is gained physically, the adipocytes do not multiply, but rather they expand, and this leads to obesity. Adipokines are a type of hormone that is secreted from the adipose tissue. When too much is secreted, it disrupts the horse's natural response to hormone insulin, leading to high insulin and glucose blood levels. Now, when there is too high of blood insulin concentrations, it can lead to laminitis. This is laminitis, a pretty sad development and consequence of EMS. Laminitis if not treated properly and soon enough, it can be a chronic disorder and can be deadly due to its pain. Laminitis is inflammation of the hoof affecting the hoof wall and angle. The picture on the top, as you can see, is what we consider a healthy hoof, whereas the one on the bottom is present with laminitis. As you can see, the laminitis hoof is angled in two ways, and the hoof is not completely balanced from toe to heel on the ground. These two pictures were actually taken from a study done by Rash on the potential of bringing a hoof back to normal after the damaging effects of laminitis. 
The study found to be positive for a majority of the horses over a six month period. So how did I turn this into my research project? There has been known research to show that EMS can be treated through diet management and exercise regimes. I specifically wanted to know the significance and difference in the percentage of components when looking at a low starch EMS feed compared to a healthy adult feed. I wanted to include a comparison of a healthy adult feed because I wanted to note the significance of feeding EMS horses based on their dietary restrictions. Going from this, I decided to use a quantitative research approach. This allowed me to gather data and analyze it to see trends. By utilizing this approach, I was able to use statistical analysis through Microsoft Excel and Google Spreadsheet to create a t-test. Now, when using this approach, I knew I needed to create a hypothesis to have something to test. The hypothesis I formed was diets targeted towards the EMS population will present significantly lower mean NSC percentages than diets managed for a healthy adult horse. The hypothesis I created was a one-tailed hypothesis. This allowed me to say that diets would show significantly lower NSC values. Now, you keep hearing me say NSC and you might be wondering what it is. NSC or non-structural carbohydrates are made up of simple sugars and starches. NSC can be harder to digest at higher levels for horses with metabolic concerns. There have been standards set on the market to keep these percentages between 10 to 13% in low starch feeds, allowing for high digestibility for EMS horses. There has been much research done already, but I'm specifically going to note Morgan et al. This study focused on the treatment of equine metabolic syndrome. This study gathered a group of EMS horses that were verified with EMS from a veterinarian. However, they had not yet quite developed laminitis. This study kept horses in their natural environments and did not bring them into the clinic. This way they could gather accurate results without having the horses have to accl acclimate to a new environment. Each horse was put with a specific diet and exercise regime to match their performance level, age, and having EMS. The owners were put in charge of executing this plan. After weeks of this study taking place, 95% of the horses showed a reduction in body mass, which is so significant seeing as obesity is one of the signs of EMS. After reading this study, I was inspired to look further into the diets they created for the horses and see what percentages of the components that the feeds exhibited that contributed to this reduction in mass. So there are quite a few steps I took in this research process. My first task was to pick different equine commercial feeding companies. For this project, I picked five different feed companies. I picked them based on their dominance in the equine industry. I then picked 10 feeds from those five feed companies, two from each company. I picked five being low starch and five being adult. I then considered what components are considered highly monitored. I then put this into different tables and graphs based on the ingredients that are highly monitored for a horse with EMS to least monitored. I then decided to focus on the NSC component. I then set up a t-test with a one-tailed hypothesis where then I tested the significance of altering NSC levels. Here is a graph to visually show the results and the difference between the NSC percentages in the low starch diet to the healthy adult diet. 
As you can see, on the left is the different percentages among the five feeds from the low starch EMS diet. And on the right is the difference in percentages of the NSC ingredient from the five healthy adult feeds. The results showed that changes in NSC were significant. After setting the p-value to equal 0.05, the results from the test showed that it was 0.0167. This number was specifically taken from the mean NSC levels from the low starch feeds and comparing it to the adult feeds. So this did answer my research question in understanding that there is a significance in the NSC component when analyzing a low starch EMS feed to an adult feed. After answering my research question, I looked at the implications of this study. This research study found two implications. One, that owners should change their horse's diet if they are present with EMS to a diet that is easily digestible for the horse. And two, that complete feeds are not suitable for a horse with metabolic concerns. So it is important to feed based on the individual needs of the horse. This, so now it is important to note that this study does present itself with some limits. This study is not an analysis of a complete diet for a horse, which would include forage and possible supplement analysis. Knowing this, further research might suggest a forage analysis for a horse with EMS to what a healthy adult horse would be able to digest. Over this entire research process, I learned a lot, a lot about connecting and comparing different terms and ideas. Having been around horses my entire life, I grew up knowing these terms. I can tell you the definition of them easily. However, when starting the task of designing this project, I learned a skill of connecting terms and not just viewing the syndrome or the symptoms as themselves. I have also broadened my knowledge to critically think, run statistical analysis, and gather data to present it in a clean and logical manner. Thank you for attending my presentation on a comparison of commercial feeds designed for EMS versus healthy adult horses. Thank you. Nice job, Bella. Um, as you know, this is the portion of your presentation with oral defense questions. And you've had the opportunity to prepare for these oral defense questions. And I'll ask you one from each of the categories that are provided, which were the research process, your depth of understanding and reflection on the inquiry process. So my first question for you, you kind of gave us a little bit of an idea about this. I'm wondering if you can expand on it though. How did your initial exploration of the scholarly conversation lead to your final research question? Yeah, so based on my past experiences with different metabolic concerns, I knew I wanted to focus my study on um, different metabolic concerns and specifically the nutritional aspect. Um, so Dr. Hughes helped me gather a list of different metabolic concerns um, that would have treatments related to diet management. Um, after we formed this list, um, I wanted to focus solely on EMS because um, one of the main treatments for it was diet alteration. Um, so after I focused on that, um, I knew the audience that I'd be presenting to wouldn't necessarily be familiar with horses. So I really wanted to show the significance in feeding um, an EMS horse versus an adult horse. And that's how I kind of got to this final project. Great, thank you. My next question for you, um, you've already also touched on, so I'm looking for maybe a little further in some of these, but the next question is, how did the limitations of your method or your data influence your new understanding? Yeah, so this diet or this research project does present itself with limits. Um, one being that 
This isn't a complete analysis of what's currently on the market. Obviously, I only took a selection of different feeds based on what I thought would best suit this research project. Um, and two, this isn't a complete analysis of um, a complete analysis of a complete diet for a horse with EMS. So obviously we don't have that forage analysis. Um, so it kind of led to my new understanding that there still needs to be more research done, but um, it's important to note from this current research taking place that you do need to feed differently. Um, and that's kind of where further research could then branch off from this study. That actually leads me to a follow-up that I'm curious about, just um, wondering, you had mentioned that you selected five feeds that were um, most common, most abundant, I forget the word you used, but I was curious on how you decided that those were the five. Yeah, so I gathered five feeds from, uh, I gathered 10 feeds from five different equine commercial feeding companies. Um, five of those feeds I labeled as low starch EMS diet and five being healthy adult diet. Now, how did I pick which low starch feeds? Obviously, because there's a wide variety already on the market. So I looked at, okay, who are they targeting um, for this feed? And the feeds I picked, they targeted horses with metabolic concerns, and they labeled this feed as low starch. Um, and secondly, I looked at kind of the performance level because I knew another treatment for EMS is um, getting them into work and getting their um, weight under control. So I knew I kind of wanted the performance level to be labeled as light work. Um, and that's kind of how I kind of picked the low starch feeds. And I also kind of looked how they compared to one another from the five different feed companies. And I just wanted to make sure that they were comparable to one another. And then the adult feeds, I just picked five feeds that were kind of labeled as adult or complete feeds that would be higher in that NSC ingredient. Makes sense. And then for our final oral defense question, I wanted to know, how did your expert advisor facilitate your deeper understanding of the research process? Yeah, so Dr. Hughes helped immensely throughout this entire research process. And she helped when we first had our first few meetings, um, she kind of helped me set up, okay, how is this whole year going to look? Which helped me a lot because I'm better when I can see, okay, what's the end goal and how do we get there? So she kind of helped me step through step throughout this entire research project. And she helped in getting different research articles and really deepening my knowledge about equine metabolic syndrome and the different treatments. Excellent. That finalizes the, the formal part of this presentation with oral defense.